What you're about to watch is a conversation that I had with one of our students about how to really maximize your ability to make Tana the center of focus and being able to push things out to other applications and other uses without having to ever leave Tana, which is a game changer, let me tell you. If you're new to Tana or want to dig deeper than you currently understand how to use Tana, we have a comprehensive course that covers how to use Tana and every aspect of it, including how to use commands, AI, and integrate with technologies like make.com. Now let's get to the interview. I'm talking with Dane, who is a member. He's a student in our community. He reached out to us and we started having some conversations and there was a lot of alignment on how we were seeing things. And he was also tinkering around and doing lots of cool stuff. So we decided, let's see what Dane has been doing and we can share some of the things he's learned and really how exciting it is about what's possible when you are incorporating different sorts of integrations, making API calls and further integrating Tana into your experience day to day. So welcome, Dane. What do you do in your day job? How long have you been using Tana? Uh, kind of introduce us to you. So uh, my day job, I'm a front end web developer, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I've been using Tana three or four months, honestly. I think I have some kind of an addiction to PKM applications, and I've tried pretty much everything that you could think of. Previously, I was pretty much obsessed with Obsidian and looked into some of the power of, you know, being able to have things locally on your machine as far as the Obsidian vault goes and being able to try to do automations with that to be able to get information out of Obsidian, but wasn't having a lot of luck. So when I stumbled on to Tana and uh, not only its integrations with AI, but the ability to make API calls within Tana, to me, that was a light bulb moment. And that was when I basically decided I was going to go all in on Tana and see what I could do with it. The thing that made you go all in was really that aha moment attached to making API calls. But what got you initially interested? What initially made you decide I'll try Tana out? That was it. For the most part, I've looked at a lot of tools with AI integration and, you know, Obsidian does have some AI plugins that you can use for it, but nothing native to it. But Tana to me was different in the way that they integrated AI. The fact that it had that appeal to me as a developer, uh, because I look a lot at Tana's data graph and the way that they actually allow you to work with it being right in my wheelhouse of, of understanding, you know, JSON objects and programming and just the object orientation of Tana along with, you know, ontology, those, some of the biggest features of that. And that's kind of been the, the reason why I got into it to begin with. And then of course, being able to actually get information out of it, because that's the big problem that I've had with almost every PKM tool that I've looked at and used is it's very easy to get information into any of them. But if you ever want to do anything actionable with it, something like writing a blog post or writing a, a tweet, any other tool, you always leave the application, the PKM application that you're in, in order to do anything on another platform. But with Tana and the ability to make API calls, you can stay focused on what you're actually working on and be able to share that with the world or do any kind of automation, to be honest with you, what, without leaving the platform, which keeps you in that flow that you need to be in, to be creative, to stay within your, your realm, especially if you're doing writing or anything. To me, it's a better experience than pretty much any other tool that I've, I've been in. Context switching is a huge productivity and especially focus killer because you have to think differently once you switch that window and then you come back and you have to start from square one. Speaking of posting to Twitter and Facebook, other social medias, this is one of the things that you've been working on. So would you like to do a quick demonstration and then we can kind of dive into that? Yeah, absolutely. Brought up my screen here. There it is. I did have some 
changes that I had to make to this out of the box. It was also adding the tag in my post on Twitter or on X. And I went in and in make.com, there's an ability to filter the content that's sent to it. So I had to filter out that tag. Now, what happened here? Uh, did it already send or, or is it prepared? Is it ready to send? Oh, it sent it immediately as soon as I, uh, actually added the tag to it. Sweet. Can we see that post or? There we go. This is the post. As you can see, I'm still playing around with trying to get the, I guess the filter didn't remove the tag, but it automatically even put in the link to make.com since I mentioned it in the tweet. Here's a couple posts that I was doing mostly to test things out. I even went in and one of the things you can do and make is add text that is constantly displayed in every post. So I was messing around with like, you know, the sent from Tana tagline. Once again, all of it can be done while you're still within Tana. And you know, this is just one platform that you can interact with through Tana. Cause I know one of the things that you and I had talked about in the past is Tana being kind of a central hub for content and automation to be able to, you know, not only automate getting information in, but automate getting information out of it. And once you're able to not just bring data in or, uh, export data out, but you're able to do both, it can become a circular system and you never have to leave where you're at to another place unless you want to. So this is huge because as people just saw, you typed that real time and you tagged it and then it just, it's sent. And if I didn't want to show people what it looked like, we wouldn't have had to switch context. We could have just had the same window up this whole time. So that is huge. And to know that Tana technically is still in alpha right now, that means that whatever powers Tana has right now, this is the worst it's going to be. It's only going to get more impressive in the future. What was the biggest challenge you had in putting this together? The biggest challenge was just going in and actually figuring out how to do the make API call. There's honestly not a lot of documentation on it. And there's not a lot of tutorials. There was just a few that I managed to find it was kind of the inspiration for me to be able to go, oh yeah, I could actually do that with uh, pretty much everything that I do inside of Tana. I could send it to, you know, Facebook. I could send it to X to Twitter and basically the sky's the limit, especially using automation tools like make.com. Not only that, but you can actually use other tools. There are other tools other than make. There are some that you can even run locally on your machine that are free. I hope you enjoyed that talk. Dane has been working on other things, including using perplexity in similar techniques to what was shown in the video. If you want to reach out to Dane, he's in the Tana Central community. You can find him there. He's also on Twitter at this handle. If you'd like to learn more, like I said earlier, we have the Tana One course. And if you'd like us to go deeper on anything, feel free to make a request and a comment on this video in our community or wherever you can find us or Dane. Until next time, cheers.